We all probably remember that point in our lives where we fell so much in love with programming that we started dreaming of someday working at some of the biggest tech companies alongside some of the smartest individuals trying to solve some of the hardest engineering problems. So we work hard all our lives chasing that one dream. We get into a good school, work on some really difficult problems, get amazing grades, land that coveted interview. And then when our lifelong dream is finally about to turn into reality, the dreaded coding interview comes along and spoils just about everything. And you can't help but wonder, all those years of hard work and perseverance taken away in just one moment because you weren't able to do a left-right rotation in an AVL tree. How could this possibly be fair? Should companies even do these silly coding interviews? Well, I've conducted coding interviews for almost over a decade now, most of which have been big tech algorithms kind. And in this video, I will do my best to share as much information as I have on technical interviews. Why most people find coding interviews so hard, why interviews are the way they are, and the mental shift you need to succeed in these interviews. And based on that information, you can decide whether these interviews are fair or not. Hi guys, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington. And this channel is all about helping you excel in your software engineering career. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. As usual, everything I talk about in this video and any related material will be linked in the description below. This video also has timestamps, so feel free to jump to sections that interest you more. With that said, let's get started by looking into why so many people find technical interviews difficult. The first reason is because they lack the fundamental knowledge in data structures and algorithms. As software engineers, we are naturally attracted towards building real things, working in real projects, solving real problems. So it's too easy to brush off those couple of data structures and algorithms classes in school or to ignore them altogether once you start your professional career. However, the fundamentals are the foundation of everything else that we build. You may not write complicated algorithms over and over again in your day job, but the understanding of the core concepts help you write more efficient code. Not to mention, you really can't clear interviews without them. The second reason why people find coding interviews daunting is because for most, it is the first time they have had this feeling of being graded by someone else under a timed environment. It's like, someone else watching over my shoulders feeling that naturally makes a lot of people uneasy. Of course, we've given countless exams in school, which do grade us and also are usually timed, but you get your own space. No one is sitting with you one-on-one -on -one inside a room, observing you as you make your way through the problems. And this unusual and awkward situation makes a lot of people extremely nervous, making coding interviews even harder for them. Reason number three is that we somehow managed to make our interviews very high stakes. If I can give you one piece of advice that will change your interviewing performance forever, it is to always interview when you don't need a job. When we have good jobs, the last thing we think of doing is interviewing elsewhere. So we wait and wait and wait until we either don't like our job or get laid off or even worse, get fired, uh, or maybe our financial situation changes. The reason could be anything. The point is we look to interview when we absolutely need to interview. And on top of that, a lot of us have built up this mindset that we have to work at one of the best cool tech companies in order to validate our ability as a software engineer. And sadly, this only raises the stakes for your interview, adding way more pressure than you ever need. Instead of, let me see what this new opportunity is about, it becomes, I have to get a job at XYZ company by the end of this month. And as a result, the interviews feel way more challenging than they are. And finally, most candidates don't really understand what technical interviews are trying to achieve. I hear people saying things like, this makes no sense because who even writes a quick sort in the real world? Or I've never had to write an interview style algorithm in my 20 years of programming career. These are fair observations, but they show a clear lack of understanding of what technical interviews are about. No one is testing your ability to do your day-to-day -day job with the actual interview question. The point of the interview is to get valuable data points about how you are as a software engineer in the real world through a simulated scenario. These data points are called signals and they are 100% relatable to the real world. We'll talk more about signals in the mental shift section of this video. But before that, let's look at why technical interviews are the way they are. The first reason is data. 
Tech interviews have been largely the same for decades now, especially in big tech. Over this period, lots of data points about interviewing has been collected and analyzed. And the data shows a strong correlation between signals you get from a typical tech interview and the potential for the candidate to succeed as a software engineer. Simply put, as unrelated to your day-to-day -day work or topological sort may be, Data has shown that exhibition of good problem-solving attributes by a candidate has a strong correlation to the potential of succeeding as a software engineer, especially in big tech. Also, it's not that the companies don't want to or don't try to innovate in this area. They do. We did go from how many clowns exist in the world or how many planes are flying in the sky at any given moment to invert a binary tree or figure out if a graph is bipartite over the course of a few decades to make the questions more natural. And believe it or not, aside from the latter requiring candidates to write some code, these questions aren't really all that different from the perspective of an interviewer. They're all testing your problem-solving ability given an odd, uncomfortable, and unusual question. Rapidly innovating in this space with novel means of interviewing also means risking the hiring of mismatched candidates, and that can be prohibitively expensive. Hiring the wrong candidate and then having to let them go shortly after can cost the company over a million dollars. So essentially, outside of minor tweaks and gradual improvements, company have no reason to radically change a system that has proven to work for the most part. The second reason is resource limitations. In an ideal world, every candidate that clears the resume screen would get a mini internship and they would be evaluated based on that alone. Obviously, this is not possible in real life. Uh, one, it takes a surprisingly long time to ramp up to large new projects, even for experienced software engineers, and companies interview a lot of candidates, so it'd be impossible to let everyone show off their skills in an internship-based approach. There are also a limited number of software engineers that want to conduct interviews and are trained to conduct interviews, so the volume of candidates needing to be interviewed, the number of interviewers available, and the amount of time it takes to conduct each interview needs to somehow add up or else software engineers will either be conducting interviews full-time or applicants will be waiting forever to get an interview date. But the length of the interview isn't the only thing. Each interview also needs to be conducted in a manner where any other qualified interviewer can evaluate the same interview and come to the same conclusion. For this to be possible, interviews need to be somewhat standardized, which is the third reason interviews are the way they are. The main goal of standardization is to make interviews objective. And that's the reason why coding interviews are so similar across all of big tech companies. The only way to conduct interviews effectively and objectively evaluate candidates is to standardize the whole process. By this, I mean have a pool of interview questions that all qualified interviewers for a company know very well. That way, everyone understands what the optimal solution is, what the near optimal solution is, or what the suboptimal solution is. And when an interviewer says it was a difficult question, every other interviewer agrees on what that difficult means. Think of it like the SATs, GREs, and GMAT. They're called standardized tests for a reason. If you get a 1570 out of 1600 in your GRE, every college knows that you're in the 99th percentile of the scores for that test. The same idea applies for technical interviews. If a company can create a pool of interview questions that are difficult enough to challenge the candidate, but solvable in a short amount of time, and it can get all its interviewers to understand and agree on the potential solutions, and more importantly, train them to look for the right signals, then the interview process can be standardized. And as a result, the evaluation becomes objective and unbiased. A natural benefit of standard and objective interviews is also that they not only help evaluate the candidate evenly, but also the interviewers. Having a subjective interview process makes it impossible to know whether it was the candidate that did not do well or the interviewer. And as an interview panel, you always are on the side of the interviewer. This can create an environment where bad interviewers can foster. But given a standardized process, every interviewer for the loop understands the problem. So it is easy to spot out inexperienced or bad interviewers and provide them with adequate training. All right, now that we've looked at why we find technical interviews so hard and why technical interviews are done the way they are, I want to encourage you to change how you think about technical interviews and make a mental shift. I think that will immensely help you succeed in your upcoming interviews. First, as I mentioned earlier in this video, a technical interview is not testing your ability to do your day-to-day -day job with the actual interview question. If you think of it that way, you're missing the point. So stop saying I will never balance an AVL tree or write a radix sort from scratch in real life. I agree, you probably won't. 
But again, that is not the point. The point of the interview is to get signals about how you are as a software engineer in the real world. How do you cope with pressure? How do you pick yourself up when you stumble? How do you approach a problem that you've never seen, seems crazy and may not even have to do anything with your real job? Do you throw your hands up and complain or do you make a best effort to solve the problem? What do you do when you're completely stuck? Do you just quit? How much guidance do you need when faced with ambiguity? How good are you at not only taking hints, but also extracting them out of the interviewer? Can you communicate technical material well? How fluent is your coding? Can you translate your thoughts into code like as if it's second nature? Do you test well? Can you catch edge cases? Do you stress test? Do you think of scale and the what ifs? Do you understand the trade-offs between the choices you've just made? So hopefully these signals give you an idea that it's not really about whether you can conjure up a complex algorithm that scientists have figured out over multiple PhDs. It is about how you make your way through a challenging situation. And in fact, if you've already seen the problem or know it, it is much less interesting to the interviewer and they may even report it as not enough signals, which isn't good news for you. So the next time you get excited about flawlessly solving an interview question in half the time or get sad about how you struggle through an interview and needed hints and guidance, think twice. The outcome of the interview may actually be the opposite of what you think. This is the reason why you hear so many people say things like, I thought I bombed the interview but ended up getting the offer. Or I solved all the questions flawlessly but I have no clue why I never got the offer. It's because they misunderstood the purpose of the interview. Second, please understand that being a good software engineer and being good at software engineering interviews are two completely different things. A lot of time I see people mix these two. People are trying to learn about graphs as they are preparing for the interviews. This usually does not end well and it is ineffective at best. For example, if you keep messing up on permutation problems over and over again, continuing to grind it out will not miraculously improve your performance. All you're doing is memorizing the solutions. And when you memorize the smallest tweaks to the question and it's game over for you. You are struggling with permutations because you don't understand recursion or basic probability. You need to focus on learning those first without the context of the interview. If you need to improve your fundamentals, go do that first. Spend one, two, three months, six months, few years, however long it takes to master your fundamental knowledge, long before you even try to solve your first interview problem. Once you have that covered, then practice the art of being good at interviews later. And I'll say it again, those are two different things. Don't mix them together. One is about being a better student of the field, being better at concepts, being better at the core ideas, and the other one is being more effective at a process. Think of it like knowing English and being great at writing English. You need to know English to create great compositions in English. You cannot learn English and create great compositions at the same time. Learning English must happen before you polish your composition skills. Third, do yourself a favor and if possible, stop cornering yourself into the I must succeed situation. I mentioned this earlier in the video on how we pressure ourselves into a situation where the interview becomes a must win. This just makes it so much worse. Interview for fun. Do it when you already have a good job and have no desire to leave. Imagine working at your dream company and getting an offer from another top company just for kicks. This empowers you. This gives you confidence. Also, stop thinking about interviewers as all-knowing people that are somehow superior than you. This leads to an inferiority complex and causes imposter syndrome, which seriously limits your ability to do well in interviews. Interviewers may be in charge of evaluating you for that given moment, and some may actually be pretty smart individuals, but all of them sure as hell are not smarter than you. I've interviewed candidates that I've thought were geniuses, and that gave me even more reasons to hire them because I would learn by working with them as well. Interviewers are simply there to do their job, just as you are. They're there to get certain positive signals and you are there to provide them with those signals. It's a mutual exchange and there shouldn't be any other power dynamics there. So please don't create that in your head. And finally, stop this mentality of thinking that you have to get a certain job at a certain company. A lot of you put so much pressure on yourselves that you have to get a certain job at this company, especially with this fang or die mentality. It's not cancer that you have to try to beat it. It's okay if you feel like cracking the interview at your dream company is too hard. Maybe you just lack the foundations. Maybe you lack the experience. Maybe you just need more time. It's not the end of the world. You can always work your way up there. There are millions of other amazing companies that will keep you happy and engaged. For example, go visit art.dev and see how many amazing career opportunities there are out there. 
And since Arc specializes in remote software engineering careers, you won't even have to leave the comfort of your home. For disclosure, Arc is a sponsor of this video, but if you've followed me for a while, you know I won't strongly back just any sponsor unless I really trust them. And I genuinely think Arc is an amazing platform. The core idea behind Arc is that your location shouldn't limit your career opportunities. So Arc makes it extremely easy to find remote developer jobs and grow your remote career by giving you access to the world's best remote jobs in just one place. But don't think of them just as a job board because they're not. By applying to their featured developers program, you can go straight to the hiring managers and get a job within just 14 days without any job applications or resumes. They work with notable tech companies and fast growing startups like Automatic, Spotify, Hims, HubSpot, and many more. Also, the team at Arc works for you, the applicant, and not the employers. So as a featured developer, companies will apply to you. You'll receive an interview request in as little as 24 hours, and you also receive hands-on support from them with the option to extend expert one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and group sessions to help you prepare for your interviews. And no, this does not cost you a single penny to get all of these amazing benefits. As of today, they have over 20,000 companies and over 100,000 active remote jobs. So give Arc a try. Use the link in the description below to learn more about their featured developer program and learn how it can help you start or grow your remote software engineering career. So yeah, I think it's a good thing that tech interviews are the way they are. It makes them predictable and you should make that work in your favor. It would be much harder not knowing what an interview would be like. Like, how would you even prep for that? It would be like walking into a room thinking that you'd be dancing with BTS and instead realizing that you'd be fighting Mike Tyson. At least with the way coding interviews are, you know that you'll always be fighting Mike Tyson, so you can at least train accordingly. Of course, there are always bad experiences and bad interviews, but that's the case with any interview. At least with these objective interviews, other good interviewers can easily spot the bad ones. So overall, I honestly think tech interviews aren't unfair at all. If anything, it is quite a fair system that does its best to be on point and objective to remove any biases or favoritism. You just need to shift your thinking to understand the signals tech interviews are trying to gather and make that work in your favor. I hope this video was useful and gave you some insights into how to think about interviews and maybe some tips on being successful at them as well. Let me know in the comments below what is your biggest stress when it comes to technical interviews and maybe how you plan to overcome them in 2022. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel for more software engineering content. Also, follow me on Instagram at Engineering with Utsab, where I host monthly Q&As and answer all your direct messages. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.